Bonjour. I am Marie Monique Stecco. I'm the president of the French Institute Alliance Francaise in New York. And we are for a great treat today as we welcome Eric Rochon, showrunner to the wonderful spy series The Bureau, in French, Le Bureau des Légendes. The New York Times called it smartest and most authentic spy series in the world. And as you all know, it's been one of the most successful French series on American television. Eric Rochon will be in conversation with Emma Tucker, and she is the editor of the Sunday Times, and she's Zooming with us from London. Thank you. This event is co-presented co co with the French Cultural Services, Sundance Now, and the Oligarchs production. And while we're waiting for people to sort of log in, I'm going to ask all of you to tell me where you're listening from. So please answer the poll. Well, a majority in, uh, in uh, New York, but somewhere else in the US as well, and somewhere else in the world, 10%. Thank you very much for those who are far away. It is a pleasure to have so many people on Zoom and Facebook uh, for the conversation today. I just want to tell you that the season five of the Bureau, it will premiere on Sundance now, on June 18th. And we are very pleased that you can zoom in to the Bureau with the first two episodes for free until then. And if you are French and uh, FIAF members or not an American, you can have 30 day free trial on Sundance now, all of June. Like you, all. I'm dying to hear about behind the scenes of The Bureau from Eric Rochon, and I'm a huge fine fan of the show. During the conversation, you will have possibility of asking questions for Eric or Emma. Send them through Q&A in Zoom or for the comments if you're watching on Facebook. And thank you. Eric and Emma for joining us today, and we are listening to you now. Thank you. Thanks very much, Monique. Thank you. And uh, good evening, everybody from London. And a big welcome to Eric, who's in southwest France. And a big welcome to all of you who've joined us uh, from all over. So Eric, um, as you saw from that little poll, we've obviously got people listening in from across the globe, which I think is testament to the fact that you've created the most successful French television export ever. Clearly it's got huge appeal. So I wondered if you'd like to start by telling us why you think it's such a pop, it's been such a popular series. Hi, Emma. Thank you very much. Uh, nice to meet you all. Um, I think that the style of the show is, has something, uh, it's very special, I think, that because with people I spoke to, it's, it's not easy for me to know why is this is so popular. I'm not the I'm not the best person to I'm not at the best place to 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 know that. But when I ask people, uh, especially in America, when I ask people, why why, why do you like this show? Uh, I think that what comes often is that the style and the point of view and the realism of uh, of the the point of view i think that that is uh, this is that is very uh, it seems to be uh, rare and new uh, to uh, to tell uh, spy stories intelligent stories with that kind of point of view uh, i really try to be very realistic and I think that that's what people like, I think. 
Well, I can certainly say, you know, speaking as your number one UK fan, although there are many contenders for that um, title, I think when I first watched the first season, that was exactly what appealed to me. It was the fact that everything I watched was plausible. It all seemed, unlike most TV or spy series, there was nothing in it where I thought, oh, come on, don't be ridiculous. So what I want to know is how did you go about making it plausible? To what extent were the DGSC involved um, in, in the decisions that you made or the plot lines? How did, you, how did you create this unique series, which was unique because it was plausible? Yeah, um, the DGSC has nothing to do with the writing and with all artistic decisions we make. Uh, they, I don't, I don't, I don't remember if they really read the scripts before we we go to shoot it. I think that um, we have a very good relationship because we trust each other. I trust them, and they trust me. It was it was very important to start the show. It was uh, this 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 trust between us is very important, but. You know, it's very simple, and uh, to do that, to do the, this kind of realism, uh, to be plausible like that, is very simple. But it's but it's very difficult to be that simple. Why? Because you just have to be rational, to have good sense, to when you write and you describe situation, you have you just have to tell yourself. I want to. I want it to be just like in the real life. It seems to be very simple, right? Just like in the real life, just act rationally. The people in this line of work are very rational, are very serious. I very, you know, they are very straight. They don't. They don't play. You know, it's not a game. So they 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 do their job very seriously. But if I want, if I want to do, if I want to be at their place, in their place, you know, I would, I would do it very seriously too. So the only thing is just to be very rational and to be at, uh, to be uh, under, uh, in their place. And you know, these people in the intelligence business, they are just like us. Really, they are just like us. They, they, they know their job, they, they, they were trained to do the job, but they are human beings like us with all the affects, with all the thoughts, with all the anxiety, anxiety, with, with all hopes and fear, just like us. So we just have to be in the, at their place and it will be okay. It seems to be simple and it's strange, but it's not so easy to do that. But, um... the, uh, especially when you... Especially when you write, you write the show, and especially for the actors when you play, it's not so easy. But it's the same principle at every moment of the of the of the show. So you need to be totally honest with us, the audience, now, and tell me: Did you get feedback from people who work at the DGSE, even sort of quiet feedback? Did they did they contact you and say, oh, this is good or or what? I mean, I'm, I'm imagining that they all watched it, but I'd love to know what feedback you got. Yes, they watched the show. They watched the show right. And they like it. They like it because uh, it's very close to the life they live. Yes. But they don't tell me, they don't tell me anything. And uh, I would be shocked if they would have uh, give 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 me uh, secrets. I don't want them to talk to me. I don't want them to tell me anything, because they're supposed to be secret agents. They're supposed to be, you know, they're supposed to 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 find to search for intel, not to tell in there. So, uh, but uh, we have a very good relationship. We need to have it because we need to use, you know. Uh, we need, we need to, to, to use a, a lot of things from the DGSE for the pictures and everything. And, and you know, when you do a show like that, uh, it's a five or six years commitment. 
you don't want to do that against the subjects you are writing uh, writing about it, it's not it's not it, there's no sense to spend five or six years to do something on intelligence agency without against them so we had with alex my associate we had to to talk to them and to to warn them we want to do a show about you we want to do a show about your job and and uh, and everything and we want to do it not with you but uh you have to you 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 have to know that and you know it was so the, the trust starts like that and it, it was very important so yes uh, we screened the show uh, the premiere uh takes place at the DGAC for a few agents from the DGAC, the DGAC, and they look and, and they watch the first two episodes of the new season. And it's always very uh, moving and very important because they like it. Why they like it? Because, uh, because it's, it's like their life. And you know, these people, they can't say anything about their, their job when they, when they go back home uh, to their families, they can't say anything. They can't say why they are they are they they feel anxious. They can't say about why they are upset against I don't know what. And they can't say anything. It's very weird to to go to go home and not saying anything about the day and uh, all the day do you, you of your job. So with this, with the show now, they can say tell the family the family you can watch the show. It's, it's almost like that. And it's very important for them. You have these uh, this, across the five seasons and there are these very complex um, uh, plot lines. Were you able to talk to uh, retired spies or uh, people in that world to get some inspiration for the stories or did the stories all come from, come from fiction? Uh, well, no, we don't work so much with experts from intelligence business. Sometimes we meet with experts of all the things like uh, experts of jihadism, of Daesh, experts of Iran. Uh, uh, I talk a lot with experts of IA and uh, uh, cyber war, cyber security. So, Sometimes we need to, to, to meet some experts of this uh, specific subject, but never spies, never uh, intelligence uh, uh, officers, never, because they won't help. They can't do that. They, they are not allowed to help us. So we don't have to, 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 to uh, uh, maybe they, they could manipulate us. They, they could use us to say something that they want us to say. So it's not, very uh, interesting for us. Uh, we, you know, we search for our own intel on internet. We have everything we want. We, we, we read newspapers, uh, we look at the news and, uh, you know, you can find really what you want. And so it's, uh, it's part of documentation, uh, from for our, uh, from our, our, our own documentation and a lot of imagination and a lot a lot of good sense and a lot of rationality. This is very important: imagination and rationality. So I'm sure. Um, again, you have these complex plot lines, but I think one of the great successes of the show and the reason why it's so popular is because of the incredibly complex characters that you create. Um, and I'm sure everybody watching has got their own favorite. So I'd like to ask you, um, who was the most, com I mean, who for you was the most complex character and the one that you found hardest to write about or to write, I should say? Well, there's a lot of different kind of complexity for characters. For example, Mother True is it's quite complex, but it's not easy to write, to build, because it's very opaque. You know, you don't see through, through him. You don't know him. 
And I think that it could be a secret of, uh, of a good hero, of the main character of a movie or, or a show, that you don't know him. He's always intriguing. He's, it's a mystery. Maybe because he's a mystery to himself, but a lot of, uh, very often, he has to be a mystery. All the characters has to be, uh, have to be a mystery because if not, if you know them too quickly, you can't do a show with them because the show is, you know, here it's five years. Every year for five years, you, you, you meet the character. And so you, you, can't, you can't get tired of them. And, 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 and to do that, they, they, they have to keep some a part of, you know, a piece of mystery. So, uh, yes, I know that I don't, uh, I'm not answering the question right now, but... Well, I'll, I'll ask um, you an easier one. He, he's the most complex. Who is your favorite character? No, no, it's, it's more complex. This one is more complex. We, we won't tell. We won't tell. It's like your favorite child. I'm sure you can tell. Her. Favorite character is, al it is always the last one. Uh, the last one has the, the, the best word, you know. So I think that my favorite character in this season, uh, in the last episode, was Marie-Jeanne. Because there's a lot of things that happening to, 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 that happens to her. And, uh, and it was very, it was great to, to, to decide to put her on the field to take her out of the of, uh, of the office and to take her and to put her, uh, her in the field because then she will reveal something of, of herself. She will meet a new kind of obstacles, a new kind of very uh, frightening situation. And it's always very interesting for the writers just to put characters in other kind of a situation because they will reveal something. They will. Uh, they will, they will learn something from themselves, and we will learn something uh, from them. So it was, it was, it was, it was, it was it's, it's always very interesting. And that's what we can do when you do a show versus when you, when you, when you, when you do a movie. When you do a movie, you have characters, they, they, um, they can change, and, but in a very short uh, time. When you do a show, you know, it's 10 episodes a year for five years. You have time to, you know, to change the car, for the, for the character to change It's very important. And they can, they, can, they can be the opposite of what they were before at first. It's very interesting. And it's like life. In the life, people, people they don't change. Um, uh, deeply, they don't change, but they change a little bit. Uh, the, 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 the chance. So it's very interesting to, to, to discover new angles and uh, new faces of the characters. And you can do that in the show. So I wanted to ask, I mean, I'm, I'm lucky enough to have seen um, the whole of season five. And we have to be very careful here not to give away any spoilers. But when, um, when you were finishing season four, there's that very, mel that very dramatic ending. When, when you were writing that, did you already have an idea of the storyline that season five would take as a consequence of this dramatic finish for, to season four? Well, one of our principles of writing, one of our, our rules of writing was you don't keep any good idea for the next season. You burn, in French, in French, you say you burn all your ships. You burn everything. You have ideas, you put, you, you, all the ideas you have, you put it in the season you are writing now. Don't keep anything for the next one. So, uh, and when we ended the fourth season, we really didn't have a clue of what we could do with the situation in the next season. And, it's very important, and we, we, we ended the, the season two like that. In, the, in the season two, at the end of the season, Malotri was a prisoner of Daesh. Yeah. Nobody knows, you know, you don't, 
you don't escape. You, you, if you are prisoner of Daesh at this moment, you die. So for us, uh, the hero was dead. That, that, um, but we, we knew that we had to, to find a solution for the third season, but we didn't know what was this solution. And at the end of the season four, it's the same, but it's very important for us to go, uh, to, go to, our, you know, to, to do the maximum of what we can do uh, and to go to the end of all our ideas, all our all situations and we burn everything. And then when, when, it's, when it's over, we start thinking about what we do next. And if we don't have any solution, it's not, it's because we are not good enough. Well, look, I have to ask, I mean, if anyone here hasn't seen the end of season four, block your ears, because I'm about to ask a question that's definitely a spoiler. Did you ever consider a plot line in which Malotru had died in the fire? Yes, sure. Uh, yes, because uh, I told you we are rational. Uh, it means <laughs> we explore every option. And more than that, um, when we explore an option, we have to work on it very seriously. It means we have to write one, two, three, four episodes to explore this option before discovering that it's a no way, it's a, it's a, a, a no way out, you know. Uh, bef but before knowing that it's not the good option we have to work on it the harder we can the hardest we can so that's why uh for the fifth season we really have to, we really had to work on this option very seriously before going com going back to another option so i just want to ask a very practical question now um you the the by its nature it's very international the, the plot lines how difficult is it to uh direct uh, and well write a script and then direct a script that involves so many different languages french english russian arabic uh cambodian uh i mean how 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 much extra complexity does that add well it's a look that that uh, almost all the actors they speak English. That's great. <laughs> so uh, if you speak English, you can work with all the actors of the world, except and sometimes we had very important actors that didn't speak English at all. Uh, and then we have two translators, but. Uh, this business, you know, acting, doing a show, doing a movie, and actors from all over the world, from Cambodia, from Syria, from Morocco, from Ukraine, from Russia, from everywhere, uh, actually they speak the same language. The language of acting, of doing a show, of doing this, this job. You always find a solution to make, to, to you know, to, to make you understand. You, you always find a solution to to find the key to direct uh, uh, actors. So, 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 uh, so, so uh, there's a maximum of actors who speak English, so it's very easy. But in other situation, you always find a solution, you know, to 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 make you understand. Well, we've we've got a lot of questions coming in. So, but before I take questions. Um, I just wanted to ask, um, for a showrunner like you, what was the point at which you realized um, that season five was going to be your last? What was the moment when you thought, right, I'm done now, this, this, I, I, my work here is done? I think that it was at the end of the season four, when I was searching for what, what can we do now? What, really, what can we do now for the next season? And I knew that it, would, it wouldn't be very easy to find, to be at the same level, to be, you know, to be as good as the, the, the season before, uh, just to be, uh, to be, 
you know, to have the same enthusiasm, to have the same imagination, inspiration. So it was, I felt it was difficult to, to keep the same level of enthusiasm and inspiration. So I felt, so if I can do this season, it would be my last one because I, 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 we, I won't be able to do another one before that, uh, after that. I knew that. So I knew at the end of the, four se the season four that if I, can, if I do another season, it will be my, la my, my last one. Well, I, I, I and I can see a number of other people. I've got an obvious question, including uh, I can see Maria M wants to know, along with me and many others, and Zoe Chevalier, will there be a season six, even without you? Yes, because uh, with my associate Alex Berger, uh, who run the, the, our company, Top The Oligarch Production, we will, uh, we will keep on produce the show, the bureau. Maybe it will be the new bureau because I quit. I quit, so the, it, it's the end of a chapter. It's the last chapter of my period, of my time. But the bureau can have another time, other teams that she will show run uh, with a new philosophy, and it will be the same. So it's a kind of reboot of the bureau. And so it will, there will be something after those, there's life, there's, there, there will be life after me. Well, I'm sure we're all very glad to hear that. Um, so I want to ask now a question uh, from Eric Williams. And he says, as an American that consumes a lot of spy fiction, there seems to be a severe lack of French work, especially in literature. Why do you think that is? And did you find it hard to overcome negative French perception regarding your spy services? Has the show helped to change that perception in a positive way? It's an interesting question. Yes. Uh, when I did the movie, The Patriots, it was a long time ago, I did a, a spy movie, it's called The Patriot. It, it was about the most sad. The, the Israeli intelligence service. And I choose to do a movie about the Mossad because I didn't want to do a movie about French services uh, because it was not very sexy at this, at, this, uh, at this time. French services, it was not very, uh, you know, it was fine. No, it was not glamorous. It was not fun. It was not sexy. <laughs> But time has changed. Uh, there was two events, two, two reasons that it has changed. One is because I decided to do a show. And a show is not, uh, actually, I won't, I won't say that it's a spy show. It's a show about intelligence uh, officers. It's a, it's a show about this job. Uh, being an intelligence officer. And when you do a show, it's, it, it's, it, it fits very well to describe a world, to describe an universe, you know, to describe a, a, a line of work. It's very, it's very fitted for that. Uh, a movie, it's something else. The movie, you, you tell a story. But with a show, you can describe a, no, a whole world, like, you know, a hospital, uh, uh, the cops, the, the lawyers, and then I, I do a show about intelligence officer. It's not spy show, it's about intelligence officer. It's about intelligence business. So uh, uh, doing a show was changing everything. We, you could do a show about DGSE because DGSE, you know, it's a, it's a work, it's a, it's a job, it's a mission, and you can describe it. So this is the first thing. And the, the second thing is that uh, I think that time has changed with terrorism, with threats uh, uh, upon our countries. And then uh, intelligence uh, job was very important in the eyes of people. People changed their, their vision of intelligence because 
they felt it was very important. They felt it was very, it's, it was vital for them. They, mm -hmm. they really want uh, their agencies, the, the French agencies to be good because it was frightening. Uh, what happened in France, what happened in, in New York, what happened in France, in Madrid, in London, the terrorism uh, changed the mind of people about intelligence, which is just anticipating uh, the threat, you know. Mm -hmm. What about Eric's point there about literature? I mean, do you ever read any spy fiction or are you not interested in the outside, the work you do in television? Yeah, uh, everything, every, everything I've done uh, started with John Le Carré. Uh -huh. I read John Le Carré when I was young and uh, I kept on reading John Le Carré and the emotion I had when I when I read John Le Carré, and especially the trilogy of Smiley, I really wanted to share it through movies and through, uh, through shows. That's why I did The Patriot, that's why I did Mobius, and that's why I did The Bureau, because I really wanted to share all the emotions, all the feelings of the effects I had when I was reading John Le Carré, which is very specific. But yeah. this, is, this is the heart and the core of my inspiration. Well, that's fascinating, really interesting. Um, so I've got another question here from Julian Dubuis. What was the reason behind choosing Jacques Audiard to conclude season five? Uh, I wanted to, to end in beauty and the, the best uh, the best way to end in beauty was to do the, the, the ending to somebody else, well, um, especially Jack Odia. I think that the, the show was mature enough to be held and to be handled by somebody, someone, a, 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 a true artist. And it was, a, it was a way to end the show without being too sentimental. And without, uh, you, you know, with, because if I if I would have ended the show myself, maybe I I would have tried to put to tell something about me, to pay, to, tell, to to say something about my relation, re, relation with my link to the show. I don't want to talk about me, uh, and it was very interesting for me uh, to see Jacques Audiard. Uh, searching for a new angle on the on the characters. It's a kind, you know, it's a kind of debrief. It's a kind of, you know, now we have four seasons, maybe five seasons, and we know the, all the characters, all these very important characters. And I want to, I want to explore uh, the heart of the of these characters. And Jack Odiar did that, and he, he did that better than than I could do. So uh, that's why I, I, um, I asked him to try to have his own vision of these stories and this character. And it's a very powerful vision, very did it, powerful. Did it lead to any tensions? Because it, his, his influence on those last two episodes is very, it's, it's very obvious, it's very clear. Um, he, because he, he does things that haven't, that, have un, that feel unfamiliar. Did you at any point sort of, want to interfere or say, oh, don't do that? Or did you just leave him to it? No, I, I told him you, you are free to do what you want. Right. And this, is, this was frightening for him. And he told <laughs> me, are you, are, you, are you serious? Yes, I am. Uh, that's, this is how it will be very interesting for you to, to do that. And so um, I was with him, but I was at his service. You know, if, if he wants me to, to write a scene for him or to give him an advice or a tip or, uh, on uh, about one or one, one specific character, I, 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 I did it, but I did it all what he asked me to do, but he was, he was, uh, he was in control of everything. He had really a, a blank card to do what he mm -hmm. wants. 
Well, I've got a very practical question here from Maria M, who wants to know when, when we can watch season five in England on Amazon Prime. It's a very practical question. It's a source of much grief for British viewers because it's not always been easy to track it down. Uh, yes, um, unfortunately, I don't know. Uh, I, I ask uh, uh, Alex Berger to, to give this answer uh, later, but um, I, I don't know for this, this specific country. Um, so I've got another question here. Um, so people are very optimistic. They're, they're very determined. It's from Louis, and he's saying, are we 100% sure there's no season six? because Mathieu Kasowitz recently made me think there might be hope. But could he perhaps take it on? I mean, he's a renowned director, uh, famous for Lion. Could he perhaps take on the project? Are you trying to make me say what I, what I don't want to say? Uh, it's uh, nice try, I could say, <laughs> nice try. <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, I'll keep trying. I'm sure there's some other people who will keep trying. Um, so, yes, Kevin Scott. Eric, what is your next project? Uh, my next project, it could be, it could be uh, uh, it's, it's an unknown project. You know, when you start to think about a project and it's not, you know, it's not produced yet, but you know that you will do that and you have a contract with a producer. It's always, it's also called unknown project. So <laughs> my next project is right now an unknown project. Uh, I just say, I can say that it will be international. It, it, will, it will be um, uh, larger, bigger, maybe, you know, uh, about, larger themes and subjects. That's all I can say now. Wow, that's very mysterious. So we'll um, get back to more practical matters. So you've confessed to enjoying Jean Le Carré. Um, Camille would like to know whether you are also a keen reader of Tintin. Tintin. Uh, Tintin, yes, when I was very young, it was uh, my first, uh, yes, my, uh, one of, my, one of my first books, but uh, yes, yes, I, I, I know Tintin very well. Yeah, I was six, six, six years or eight years old. Well, that's good. And then um, another author who I've not heard of, but uh, Kevin Scott would like to know, are you familiar with Gabriel Allen books written by Daniel Silva? This is what Kevin Scott says, he is my favorite author, just as the Bureau is my favorite TV show. That's great. I, I know. I, I'm not. I don't. I don't know. I don't know it. Uh, I'm sorry. But you know, uh, I don't know if it's spy novels or everything. But I can't read spy novels anymore for a long time now because I can't see. I can watch spy spy show or spy movies. <laughs> I just can't have anything with spy. We spy stuff. Because, uh, you know, I, 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 I wore our intelligence, uh, about intelligence, and I really can't, uh, I can't enjoy any fiction about it anymore. Mm, fair enough. Well, maybe, maybe your next project could be uh, a television series about global pandemics. Eric. It could, but I, I think I could. <laughs> Maybe you've had too much of that as well. Yeah, there's a lot of very interesting things to say about it, uh, especially because it starts uh, in China. And uh, it's very interesting. I, I could say that some, some agents, some undercover agents in the world should have been in quarantine somewhere or uh, contained somewhere, so un unable to do their job uh, like others. Uh, it could be very interesting to to do uh, to tell a story about that, but I think that I, I wouldn't be the, the only one to. So it, maybe I, I will let let that story to others. Well, um, I'm happy to report that uh, Alex Berger has come to our rescue on the question from Maria about where to see um, the bureau in the UK. 
So the answer is it's on Sundance right. now, first in the UK, and then on Amazon on VOD. Uh, and the UK should be soon by the fall. Anyway, I'm sure you're, M Maria and others, you'll find a way of, of getting your hands on some on the Bureau, such as it's uh, such as the excitement. Um, so listen, uh, Eric, that was be that was really interesting. I'm there are many more questions, but we don't have time for them all now. Um, I think having watched the whole of season five, I can, without revealing anything, assure people that they're in for a treat. I won't say anything else, um, but it was as brilliant as all the other seasons. Um, I think you could probably tell from tonight that there are enough people out there who, whether you have anything or not to do with it, Eric, they're very keen for a season six. So I think the best outcome from all of this is season six of the Bureau and something amazing from you as yet to be revealed. So um, <laughs> thank you very much, Eric. And um, I think Marie Monique wanted to say a few words on behalf of the FIAF. Thank you very much, Emma. Thank you very much. Well, thank you both of you, I mean, for the most wonderful conversation. And I'm sure like everybody who listened to Eric, they all, and I'm sad, I can't wait to dive into the fifth series, knowing that now it's the last one that we will see with you uh, at the helm. So thank you very much. And I want to thank those who joined us on Facebook and at, uh, Zoom. And if you want to know more about the geopolitical background of the Bureau, I would suggest that you hear Gilles Pequel, Middle East expert, on Wednesday, June 17, which is two days from now at 12. He will be joined by New York Times journalist Robert Wirth, who was uh, the Beirut chief of the New York Times for many years. And I'm sure that you will not want to miss it now that you've learned all these things about the Bureau. And of course, my next pitch is to say, we hope that everybody who enjoyed conversation today will want to be giving some back to FIAF. Any money, any amount help us to support our teachers and our artists and for us to maintain the promotion of French culture in New York. And I thank all of you very, very much. And thank you, Eric, and thank you, Emma. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Marie Monique.